This is a message for you. Listen carefully. If your significant other starts waving the breakup card every time you dare to disagree, well, pal, that's like them wielding a grenade in a pillow fight. Not cool. I mean, seriously, threatening to break up every time there's a tiff. That's the relationship version of playing the I'm taking my ball and going home move from the playground. If someone's idea of conflict resolution is hitting the panic button on the relationship, then buckle up, cause it's gonna be a wild ride filled with more ultimatums than a presidential election. Let's decode this relationship strategy. They drop the breakup bomb so you'd be too scared to breathe differently from them in the future. Talk about a control freak. It's like they've got an I win every argument card they're dying to play. But guess what? You're not an emotional hostage, you're a person with opinions and feelings. You're not their puppet, you're a human being with your own damn strings. The moment someone drops the breakup threat, well, that's your cue, amigo. Grab your coat, hold your head high, and kindly escort them to the exit sign. Sayonara, farewell, adios, and don't let the door hit you where the good lord split you. Seriously though, relationships aren't some game of chicken where the first person to threaten a breakup wins a prize. So, to all you lovely folks out there, remember, relationships are about mutual respect, not a tug of war where the rope is your heartstring. Don't let anyone hold your relationship hostage just because they can't handle a disagreement without threatening the nuclear option. And if someone's using the breakup button faster than a teenager switches TikTok trends, it's time to thank them for the offer and show them the exit. You've got better things to do than play emotional roulette with someone who treats the relationship like a bargaining chip at a poker game. So, to all the peeps out there, if your partner's idea of compromise is my way or the highway, hand them their suitcase and let him catch the next train to Singleville. You deserve someone who values you more than they value winning arguments. So there is obviously um, an elephant in the room. <laughs> not a pun the interview that my ex did so i did watch it um it was hard to watch for several different reasons everyone deserves the opportunity to voice their side of the story um no one deserves to feel silenced i feel like having the opportunity to share your side of the story and your perspective of a situation that happened is sometimes honestly really good for the soul <laughs> um i know from firsthand that sometimes talking about things feels like a really big weight is lifted off of your shoulders and your heart and sometimes it's healing for some people so that relationship happened when we were both teenagers we were very 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 young and i think watching that interview made me realize more than ever how much i have grown up i'm at fault for so many things i've done when i was younger i've done just a few years ago i have made mistakes I have learned along the way. But using like young, I was younger as an excuse. It doesn't justify, it doesn't make things okay. Like no matter what side of the story that the audience wants to believe, regardless of anything else, it doesn't make anything that happened and that relationship okay. If that's true, that's a whole bucket of wrong topped with a dollop of what the heck were you thinking? But hey, let's get our facts straight, shall we? There's this age math dance happening. Some say 17, some say 18, and the other numbers are doing a macarena in the mix. Turns out, Amber was supposedly 18, Casey was 16. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Legally adult or not, it's still a case of what on earth were you doing? And cue the comment section. Brace yourselves for a parade of armchair lawyers arguing about whether 18's a teen or a full-grown adult. Legal yeah, it's welcome to adulthood. Here's your adulting handbook, but ethically. Hey, it's about as clear as a foggy day in San Francisco. But let's not get it twisted. Being 18 isn't a hall pass for doing whatever you please, especially if it involves anything remotely sketchy with someone still in the high school hallways. Like, come on now, Amber, you're supposed to be setting trends, not playing life-size chess with someone barely out of algebra class. And you know what's coming next, don't you? The defense squad, ready to unleash their but technically speeches. Brace yourself, because some people have a PhD an excuse making and they're gonna argue till the cows move their way back home all right folks the bottom line is this whether you're 18 or 81 let's agree that dodging moral responsibility isn't a good look on anyone so to amberlin and her roller coaster of controversy how about we opt for less drama and more well just anything other than this mess please and thank you i know a lot of people are asking me about it and i'm simply not going to talk about it like one thing you're not going to catch me doing is sitting here saying well, he lied about this, he lied about this, this is actually what happened. It's not gonna happen here. I care more about moving on, letting go. I'm not gonna say this has been easy for me by no means. I have shed some tears, but there's power in knowing that him and I are adults now and we get to choose which route we take. And this is the one that I'm choosing to take and I'm actually really happy with that. And I just wish him nothing but happiness and wellness. That's 
That's what matters to me. Amberlin, girl, you can't just throw around accusations like confetti at a New Year's Eve party and then try to do the cha-cha away from the fallout. Falsely accusing someone of serious stuff, that's like slapping a handle with care sticker on a sledgehammer. But let's not forget the eternal optimist, the knights in shining armor defending Amberlin in the comments section. They're like, oh, she was young. We all make mistakes. Sure, we all make mistakes, but not everyone plays the accusation game with people's lives like it's a round of Monopoly. There are folks out there who still cheer for Amberlin like she's the protagonist in their favorite soap opera. Talk about unwavering loyalty. I mean, their lives must be more complex than an episode of Black Mirror if they're still on hashtag Team Amberlin. But hey, in this wild world of internet fandoms, there's always that group of die-hard supporters. They're the ones who believe a cat can play the piano and that the earth is flat. Oh, the wonders of the internet. The plot twists never end, and the comment section is the wild west of opinions. Here's to hoping for less drama and more common sense in the future. A lot happened in that relationship for two teenagers who were literally in an adult relationship. And that is what he said in the interview. And it hit me like a train. I was like, that is so true. We were both put in an adult relationship way too young. There was a lot of toxicity from both ends. And I just hope that he's okay. I, I want to be okay as well. And I kind of just want to move on from the situation. It was 15 years ago, like 15 years ago as teenagers. It's wild. But above anything else in the whole entire world, I just want healing to happen for both of us. I feel like that's really important. But um, that is all I'm going to say about the situation. And I'm going to stand my ground on that because I just feel like continuously talking about a relationship that happened between two teenagers 15 years ago isn't good for anybody, especially the two people involved. Oh, Amberlin, the queen of emotional poker faces. Did she shed a tear? Nope. Did she toss out an apology or a sprinkle of remorse? Not a chance. It's like watching a magician pull excuses out of a hat. Age, circumstances, mental health. Pick a card, any card, just not the accountability card. And what's this about a grown-up facade? No tears because she's suddenly all mature now. It's like when you try to pass off a fake ID at the bar. Nice try, Amber. But sorry, the bouncer ain't buying it, and neither are we. The classic move, blame both sides, throw in some toxicity seasoning, and voila. Now, everyone gets to choose their favorite flavor of drama. It's like trying to sell a car with two flat tires. Sure, it moves, but it's a bumpy ride. The vibes, though, oh, the vibes. Angry vibes, not shocked or saddened, just plain mad. It's like dealing with a toddler who didn't get the candy they wanted. Tantrum mode activated. And of course, we can't forget the narcissist his prayer, blame it on age, circumstances, and sprinkle a little mental health on top. Oh, and let's not forget the I'm so grown up now act. Bravo, Amber, bravo. It's like watching a Shakespearean play, but instead of tragic soliloquies, we get excuses and deflections. So, there you have it, a masterclass in dodging, deflecting, and blaming. Amberlin's playbook is thicker than a Harry Potter novel. The drama might be intense, but hey, at least we're getting a crash course in 21st century psychology, one YouTube video at a time.